About a month and a half ago, SV Boney approached me and they wanted me to try out a brand new filter that they're working on. This is their first astrophotography only dual narrowband filter. It's a two inch filter and it's $160 right now at least. Uh, it's on sale at the moment and I think the price though is typically going to be about $190. So if you want to get the $160 price tag, either watch for a sale or you know buy it right now. Now it's a dual narrow band filter. So what this means is essentially is it passes, light from space is different than light here on earth in that most of the things that we see in space that are at least interesting are in fact light that is emitted. Okay, if you burn something, what happens is it leaves off a very specific sliver of light from the rainbow. So here on Earth, when things reflect off of things, well, they it reflects a variety of different wavelengths of light. But when something is burned, like if you take that light and you pass it through a prism, and normally you would see a rainbow, well, what you actually see from light that a chemical reaction is is it's this very specific slot or strip in the rainbow and that's what oxygen 3 and hydrogen alpha are and that's what this filter passes it passes those two specific chemical reactions which is interesting because in space those are to the big uh, giants that we kind of look at in space you know hydrogen alpha as a matter of fact it makes up like 95 percent of the universe and O3 is a very much smaller percentage of that, but O3 is very important because it means that something has happened here, that there has been uh, major chemical reactions that have been going on in space for quite some time, and it means activity, of course. So it's, it's obviously very interesting to scientists, but it also makes our pictures interesting because it gives us contrast between hydrogen alpha and uh, the oxygen three. So that way our pictures don't look like a boring drab red because that's what they would look like otherwise now if you're wondering why you would want to reject almost all of the light that's coming to the camera and only allow these tiny little slivers of light to pass through well the fact is is that it basically blocks all the light pollution because we can pick out a very very specific sliver of light we increase our signal to noise ratio because light pollution is a type of noise and it you know it greatly it greatly increases the image contrast that we see in fact this filter at 7 nanometers it's going to be like about a 80 to 90x reduction in the amount of light pollution in your image so that's that's like going to a dark sky site that's you know 80 to 90 times darker that's, that's pretty significant now let me give you some specific specification details about it. So for the O3 band, which mainly your green and your blue pixels are going to use that, that section of the transmission, it's like 90% transmission. So it's going to pass 90% of that light. For the O, for the hydrogen alpha, it's going to be 94%. And then, yeah, a couple other things of interest. So the filter, it's M48 threads, you know, with a 7.75 millimeter thread pitch it'll fit your two inch eyepiece. Now the copy that I have, of course, doesn't even have any markings on it whatsoever because it was just a prototype. Mine, the inspection sheet does in fact say that this is a six and a half nanometer filter. SV Pony is advertising it though as a seven nanometer thread filter. And the way I used it was I actually threaded it in in front of my focal reducer. So the filter was quite a ways from the sensor and which is going to bring up a big question. Okay, does this filter have halos? Dual narrowband filters, of course, they pass hydrogen and oxygen and oxygen is typically one of the hardest types of transmission spectrums to do because you get halos around bright stars. And let's switch to the whiteboard now because there's no wind there. And we're gonna tell you all the details you need to know about that. But let's get really techy about halos and what a halo is and, and why it is concerned when you're using narrowband filters. With broadband filters, halos aren't as particularly big of an issue, but with narrowband filters, they do become a problem. And so it requires a lot of care and precision to make a good narrowband filter. Now, up here we have the objective lens, okay, which would be like the front end of this guy. And then we have either your 
focal reducer or field flattener, and then finally you have the sensor in the back. What happens is light, all right, comes from a star somewhere, okay, passes through the objective, through the focal reducer, and what happens is some of that light, well, most of that light is absorbed and detected by the silica of the sensor and then turned into a signal. But some of that light bounces off of the sensor and goes back, back forwards. And we'll, we'll do another line down here. All right, now, typically your focal reducer or your field flattener, if it's properly, you know, anti-reflection coated, it's not gonna be a problem because it's just gonna pass through and go right back out of the scope again. However, narrowband filters, and if you looked at mine in the other video, you know, I showed some close-ups of it, you'll notice that they're very, very reflective. As a matter of fact, they're like mirrors. And let's, let's, let's say the filter is here. Well, what happens is because the, the surfaces of them are so reflective, it will shine that light back again at the sensor. And what happens is, is let's say, let's say this right here is your star. That's from the light, the initial light hitting the sensor. Well, when it goes forward and it comes back again, it hits the same spot, but it's more diffuse now because it's now out of focus. And so what happens is you get this, uh, what do they call a halo? You know, it looks like a, a broken egg on a, on a pan. Now, there's a couple things to keep in mind here is that your filter's position will actually change a lot this halo. So these halos, the further your filter is from the sensor, the larger the halo will get. The closer the filter is to the sensor, the smaller the halo will get. However, the closer the filter is and the smaller the halo is, the brighter the halo is. The further away the filter is and the larger the halo becomes, well, the fainter that, filter, that halo becomes. Now, in my particular configuration, the way I set mine up with, and, and by the way, with this filter and the configuration that I used, I had no halos whatsoever. As a matter of fact, this was the most halo-free filter I've ever used. Other people have reported seeing something of a halo, and, and this is why I think. So I have, you know, you have your objective lens here, focal reducer, and then camera sensor. I had my filter, all the way in front of the focal reducer. So it was about four inches away from the actual sensor plane itself. What that meant is that the halos were so large and also so diffuse that they didn't really even show up. Okay, so that's probably why I saw no halos whatsoever. Now, this is a budget filter, so okay, it's it's got some halos, and even SB Boney told me that, you know, they weren't really too concerned about it. The way these halos are typically taken care of is they put anti-reflection coatings on the backside of the filter. And some guys will, you know, the really, really expensive filters will actually have anti-reflection coatings on both sides of the filter, just to make sure that there are no reflections off the focal reducer up front and then back again on the filter if you had the filter closer to the, focal, the center plane, okay? <laughs> but yeah, so that's how I did it essentially. And that's why I saw no no reflections whatsoever because I had the sensor and the filter far enough apart. And it's a two inch filter and I'm using a four third sensor, which means that I can stick it out there. And, and typically though, you do want your, your filter as close to the sensor as possible. And that is because of vignetting. However, I'm using a two inch filter with a four third sensor. That's uh, that means that I have lots of freedom to actually put the, the filter quite a ways away from the sensor and thus diffuse the halos and, and basically make them vanish. So, so that's how I got it to work for me. And I, I got to say, it, it, it produces absolutely no halos whatsoever for me. I even tried to image something that would have a halo and it didn't have a halo at all. So, so there you go. Now, who do I think that this filter is good for? Uh, in my opinion, this filter is absolutely a perfect match for their ED doublet line of scopes. Uh, now the, the triplet version that they have 
it does require you to put the filter uh, quite a bit closer to the sensor. And I haven't actually tried this yet because since I got this scope and I put this guy on here, I, I haven't had a clear night. <laughs> And I've got a comet up too, which is really driving me nuts because I want to go image it. But anyways, yeah, they're ED doublet scopes, which SV Pony has three of them right now. I think they're the perfect uh, combination for this particular filter because when I used it, and you know, of course it puts it far enough away from the sensor that there are no halos whatsoever. Uh, it's almost as if you're using a much more expensive filter out there. And this right here is the 102 millimeter version. Of course, they make an 80 millimeter version and a 70 millimeter version. And, and like I said, you know, I think that's kind of the perfect combination for it with a one shot killer camera. Uh, typically though, I use this scope with a mono camera, which is how I've got it set up right now, because these scopes are kind of perfect for, for narrow band. Those are my thoughts. I think it's a good filter and seems to be pretty solid. I, I haven't really looked at the prices of other dual narrow band filters that are out there. You know, for considering the price that it's at, it seems like a pretty good deal to me. Uh, certainly very fun for me to use. And whether or not I would like use this long term, I'll do another video about that.